you haven't attended uh, one of my uh, sessions previously, my name is Jason Swan, uh, one of the senior partners at Holborn Assets, whom are a wealth management practice, uh, now one of the largest wealth management practices uh, in Europe. Um, and I'm based here in Portugal, uh, down in the south, in the best part of Portugal, in my slightly biased opinion, in a town called Albufeira. And uh, around about six years back, Holborn Assets uh, launched Holborn Passport. Uh, and Holborn Passport is a service dedicated to achieve residency and citizenship for our clients in different countries all over the world. Uh, of course, myself being based in Portugal and a strong presence in Spain as well, uh, the Spanish and the Portuguese golden visas tend to be my speciality, if you like. But by day, I'm a fully qualified financial planner, uh, often uh, talking about how to structure income, minimise taxes and prepare for moving to Portugal. Uh, but of course, uh, well, more and more often now over the past couple of years, especially talking about the Portugal golden visa program but any questions that you have generally around moving to portugal uh, money in portugal or getting permission to live in portugal and a pretty handy contact to have uh, i've been here now for uh, about four years give or take uh, i was in spain previously for five years uh, my portuguese is equally as bad uh, as my spanish and uh, previous to spain i was in uh, Manchester in, in the UK, which is my hometown. But both Spain and Portugal are certainly better than Manchester, in my opinion. Uh, Portugal is where I decided to settle in the end, which uh, for me, I think is the best country anywhere in the world. It has a bit of everything, which I'm sure you already know uh, if, of course, you're watching this evening. Um, but that's me. So moving on, as far as what Holborn Passport does, if you're unclear, Holborn Passport gives an all-encompassing one-stop shop to help you move, uh, well, not necessarily move, but to apply for the golden visa. Of course, one of the uh, caveats of the Portugal golden visa is that you don't have to move to Portugal. Uh, you might simply want to uh, get a passport for Europe in five years' time. Uh, but as a whole, you have myself and my team, and we provide all the services required to get you from where you are now to getting that golden visa in hand and moving your way to citizenship further down the line. And that includes the, the legal work that's required, setting up your tax numbers, applying for the bank account, you know, accompanying you for your biometrics appointment, for your fingerprints and, and your photo. Uh, of course, you have my um, witty banter and company throughout the process to keep you entertained. Uh, but more importantly, uh, we're here to make sure everything runs nice and smoothly. We liaise with all the different moving parts, including the banks and investment managers and the tax office and biometrics and translation of documents and so on and so forth. If you get a chance, please do type in, obviously do some research on Holborn. Please type my name personally into Google um, and, and do some due diligence as well. Uh, I'm proudly just added on the whole raft of awards that Holborn Assets have just won at what is the equivalent of the, the Grammys of the investment world, shall we say. Um, but uh, yeah, clean the sweep on, on a number of different awards there, which is great. And please do have a look at Trustpilot if you get a chance uh, for some of our client reviews. Uh, we have now submitted over 10% of the world's golden visa applications for Portugal. We maintain a flawless success rate uh, of those applications as well. So yeah, very well versed and very experienced in this area. So please do reach out with any questions that you have as we go through. Um, for reference, if you are considering not maybe specifically Portugal, but maybe thinking just of another passport or another way to Europe, uh, we do provide advice on many different programs internationally. Uh, in Europe, the Portugal program is by far the most popular. Um, matched, of course, well, sorry, not matched, but followed by the likes of the Spanish Golden Visa, which may close at some point over the next kind of six to 12 months. Uh, the Maltese program, uh, very similar to Portugal, by the way, that you don't have to become tax resident in Malta to get a passport. Uh, you can get a passport for Europe through Malta in just 18 months. Uh, much faster than Portugal. The downside being is that the capital required is over a million euros to do so. So Portugal, for all things considered, remains the gateway to Europe. 
uh, more often than not. Uh, but internationally, again, whether it's a residency or citizenship program that you'd like to find out more about, please do get in contact. You'll find my email address uh, as we go through the presentation and happy to field any questions on those as well. But without further ado, what we've all come here for is, of course, Portugal and uh, my favourite country, as I mentioned, um, and uh, the Golden Visa in particular, as to what's been going on. It's a topic that is consist con consistently, regularly changing. The laws change every five minutes. The uh, the time frames change. The rules generally have, have been changing. Um, but I'm going to give you an up-to-date snapshot on how things lie this very moment in time. The Golden Visa program was launched back in 2012. It remains the most popular route into Europe. There's now been over, I think, 12,000 applications submitted with over 30,000 people in total um, getting involved with the Golden Visa since it was launched. Uh, it is an investment visa which allows you to invest in a certain type of investment here in Portugal. And in return, you are granted a VIP pass to live work or study in Portugal. And that's for both the main applicant and potentially family members as well, which I'll come on to shortly. In addition to the visa and the rights to live and enjoy Portugal, uh, once you have, once five years has elapsed since you apply for the visa, you then actually get access to a passport, which is the treasure at the end of the rainbow, as it were, because once you receive the passport, you have access then to live, work or study in any European country for both yourself and your family as well. So for my clients, I would say the majority of my clients are not necessarily moving to Portugal straight away. It's actually more of a plan B for the future uh, or a retirement plan, perhaps. And so not necessarily even moving to Portugal, maybe thinking of moving to Italy or Greece, for example. Uh, but by using by going through Portugal, you have the shortest time to achieve a passport other than Malta, uh, and you don't have to live in the country. And there's only two countries, it's only Malta and Portugal, where you can get a European passport without having to move your tax residency. The minimum stay in Portugal is only two weeks in every two-year period uh, to maintain the visa and then apply for a passport in five years' time. So, again, many reasons why people consider the program, but like I say, whether it's a retirement plan, hearing a lot certainly from the US at the moment around a kind of political motivation as to why they may want to, to move country in the future. Um, whether it be for children, children's study. I had a client of not so long back where uh, there, was, there was gun crime uh, near, near the children's school, so they, they really wanted to kind of get access to another country for, for the children. But yeah, that's that's the, the general overview. That's what it's what it's there for and very unique by the fact that you only have to be here for two weeks every two years. Hopefully that's nice and clear. Again, any, any questions on the programme, please ask and uh, I'll come back to that shortly. Um, but as a, as a Golden Visa holder, you get access to all the rights, all the benefits of being a Portuguese citizen. Um, most popularly, the uh, healthcare system, uh, well, one of the best rated healthcare systems anywhere in the world, very similar to the education system as well, whether it be for yourself again or children getting access to European education. Uh, of course, it's not a bad place to live as well. It's a fantastic place to live, the best place, in my opinion, anywhere in the world. But that is, of course, a big plus, whether or not you're planning to move straight away or later on, you get to enjoy about 300 days of sunshine uh, across Portugal. And um, and yeah, there are some tax incentives as well. There is the, the second version of NHR, um, which, well, the first version finished at the end of, end of last year, but the second updated version of the non-habitual residency program is going to be particularly exciting for those aged under 35 years old. Not quite as good for retired uh, applicants as NHR 1.0, but there's that. And there's also other ways of structuring your assets and your income to minimise taxation in Portugal. Um, and that, that, again, not for today, but putting my financial advisor hat back on, um, we can we can talk about uh, you know, how to to navigate the tax rules and, uh, and, make, and kind of be as efficient as possible. If you become tax resident, you may not become tax resident. To do that, 
um, you have to spend at least six months of the year in Portugal. If you spend less than six months of the year, you don't become tax resident and your tax will never change. You will only pay tax on, on any income that's derived from within Portugal. And I just want to clarify that, that by applying for the visa and by getting a passport, you do not become tax resident in Portugal. There are countries such as the US, of course, which tax its citizens rather than its residents. But for Portugal, taxes only the residents. Okay, but yeah, there that's, that's what is up for grabs with the Portugal Golden Visa. Now, as far as where you head to, if you do move to Portugal, again, I'm down here in the south in Albufeira, uh, which is the warmest part of Portugal, in my opinion, with the nicest beaches. Uh, but it is quite a relaxed lifestyle. It's actually a really nice balance between work and uh, and social life. It keeps me calm living in a nice, nice little beach town. But if you do want to have a head towards a more cosmopolitan part and built up, of course, you have the capital of Lisbon, which is a completely different experience. And of course, you have Porto. And generally, those three areas are the kind of main uh, points of Portugal, if you will. Uh, some choose to live more inland, uh, you know, buy some land, maybe live on a farm, um, maybe have a nice view. Of course, the coastlines are generally quite flat in Portugal, but... Uh, but hey, whatever takes your fancy, you have the Portuguese islands as well, such as Madeira. Um, but I'm sure I don't need to give anyone a geography lesson. Not that I could particularly well. I never really did well at geography, but, uh, but loads to look forward to. Now, coming back to the program and how to qualify for the visa. Now, the investment criteria uh, has changed over recent years on a number of occasions. But as of right now, there are five different ways of which you can qualify for the Golden Visa program. The first one is you can set up a business in the country and you can create 10 jobs. If you want to employ 10 people as a reward for that, you can have the Golden Visa. Now that isn't something that you would probably do just to get the visa. However, if you have plans to expand your business or set up an office in the country, that may be a good way to go. You can make donations. If you're feeling generous, you can make donations of 250 or 500,000. Um, strangely, don't do many of those applications. In fact, I don't think I've ever done a donation application. I don't know why. But if that's your thing, if you're feeling generous, then that is perfectly viable. Um, and of course, we will still be able to achieve the visa and the passport thereafter. Uh, and of course, the investment options. Now, investment options, you have really two categories. The first is to choose a venture capital fund or a, or a uh, venture capital or an investment fund, which meets a certain criteria uh, from 500,000 euros. And the second investment category is to invest into an existing Portuguese company, again, on the basis that that company provides a certain number of jobs or maintains a certain number of jobs. Uh, by quite some margin, the most popular route for new applications uh, as of this year is through the choice of an investment fund or a venture capital fund, of which we'll cover very shortly. Hope that's nice and clear, but those are the five routes. If you hear of any other routes, then know that they don't exist. <laughs> those are the five. Um, okay, so a bit of news. Um, doesn't take too far to find lots of bad news and angry clients uh, around backlogs in Portugal of the application and the time it takes to get the visa. Um, Seth, who was the borders agency previous to uh, AMA, who, who has now taken that that rule had a nightmare back at the end of, I think back at the end of 2021, when the laws changed between what type of property you could invest into, there was an absolutely disaster with the online portal where you could, there, were, there could be no new applications uploaded for about three months and it caused absolute chaos. There was applications lost. There was applications sent back to the beginning of the queue and it caused, of course, huge delays. Uh, that has got slowly better and better. Um, the current situation is now, as I say, AMA have taken over from CEF. They have a new and improved online portal. Applications are being actioned faster. 
Um, and more importantly, the government announced last month that a special task force, kind of sounds like the A-team, the special task force, but there is a special task force that has been assigned now to clear all pending applications by the 2nd of June, 2025, which is like music to everyone's ears, uh, which now means that we can safely assume a processing time from start to receiving the visa of around nine to 12 months, which is fantastic. It was, there was a time in years gone by when it only took three months. It was a little while back. The program has become uh, very popular since those days, but nine to 12 months is the current wait time if you was to start the application today. So that's good news. Um, earlier this year as well, the government announced that the five-year clock to citizenship will now start to tick sooner as well. So now instead of waiting to get the visa for the five-year clock to begin, uh, that now starts from when you apply, when you submit your application. So in actual fact, if we take 12 months to receive the visa, you've only then got four years before you can apply for the passport. So again, more good news that came out earlier this year. Um, okay, summary of current kind of investment levels, if you will. Now, as I mentioned before, you have the option of making a donation of 250000 or investments from 500000 Um Now, for considering all the different investment routes out there, there are additional thresholds, if you like, subject to how the investments uh, are structured. And some investments offer a financing option, which for those that are considering a donation of 250, um, there is now an alternative where you can pay 168,000, uh, which consists of financing of a 500,000 euro investment. So it's still a cost of 168,000, but it's still a better cost than 250. The interest rate, you know, on, on financing that over the time that you need it for works out around about 5% per year, which could be worse. Um, but you can now finance the investment. The donation, as we know, is 250 uh, to the government. Uh, there are, as of today's date, investments that do pay an upfront return, also with the option of a loan as well. So if you do uh, capitalize on these the specifics, uh, then the investment capital needed from you as the investor can be as low as 325000 399000 or of course, without any upfront returns, you would just have the standard 500000 capital required and then an annual return based on the investment. Again, hopefully that's nice and clear, but any questions, throw them in the box and we'll, uh, we'll come back to that shortly. Quick note for uh, US nationals as well. I keep getting asked about um, about this topic. It's not a service that that, that Holborn provides, but uh, more and more clients this year have been structuring their investment to utilize retirement accounts rather than uh, cash holdings uh, or other investments. Uh, and a number of clients have been able to utilize their retirement accounts without making a physical withdrawal from the accounts, which of course means that there is no tax on the profits as you would pay with a withdrawal or potential penalties if you withdraw below a certain age. Uh, if you would like to find out more about how that's done, obviously the first point of call is to book a call in with myself about the program. Um, but then of course, with your permission, I can introduce you to uh, a relevant advisory over in the US to assist with that process. Okay, now, as far as who qualifies for the golden visa, very, very simple. Uh, there's four rules, four categories. Uh, the first is that you don't already have a European passport. Uh, that's one tick. Uh, you have a clean criminal record. It's the second tick, or at least a pretty clean criminal record. We have had success with some misdemeanors in years gone by, but in the main, it's got to be pretty clean. Uh, make an eligible investment, of course, as we've talked about in the in the criteria that meets the government's requirements, and to maintain and a hor horrible requirement, this one, but you've got to come to Portugal and you've got to spend at least 14 days in the country uh, in a two-year period. So hopefully that's not too much to ask, but that's it. That's all you've got to do. You don't have to live here. You don't have to move and change your tax residency. It's just 14 days every two years 
and then in five years' time, we can apply for your passport. There's no other requirements or restrictions. Uh, it's literally just those four things. To trend, and just to add to that, so of course, when you get to applying for a passport, the only things to really add to that list is to maintain the investment, um, keep a clean criminal record, and to learn Portuguese. Uh, and not to a perfect level, but to an A2 standard. And you now have the option to take a test at a local test center at any point during those five or six years. Uh, or you can now pay for a course and you can actually evidence that you have put a minimum number of hours into that course. Um, and uh, and that also will pass for for the for the passport. So there you go. That's it. Piece of cake. It's not, it's not, it's not, there's nothing else. There's no, uh, it's very clear, very clear cut. Now, as far as which family members can be included, uh, there is one main applicant. Okay. And that main applicant can include their parents and their children and their spouse. I always forget that one. So the parents, if they're over the age of 65, they are automatically assumed as dependent. So there's no proof required uh, to prove dependency. Children up to the age of 21 can also automatically be included. Uh, if children are older than age 21, they may still be included as long as we can evidence uh, enrollment into further education or financial dependency. Um, and we can also change who is the main applicant as well. So we always try to get as many people as possible uh, onto the application. I think that the most, num the highest number of people I've got onto one application was 13, which included step parents and stepchildren and big families. And it was, uh, the paperwork was was fun, but um, great value for money because, of course, there's only one, one investment and everyone gets the visa uh, and everyone gets the passport as well. And um, so, so, yeah, hopefully, again, nice and clear on that front. The process, bit of a busy slide, but. All you need to remember on here is that Holborn does everything on your behalf. You do not need to go for any other outsourced work. You don't need to find a lawyer. You don't need to find an accountant. You don't need to do anything. It is an all-encompassing service um, maintained and managed by myself and my team uh, here at Holborn. It all starts from, of course, you selecting the investment and how you'd like to qualify for the programme. Uh, followed by then us applying for your tax numbers, which is step. Oh, excuse me, step number one. Uh, and after we've got the tax numbers, we can then apply for your bank account. <clears throat> now you do need to have a Portuguese bank account. You can choose any bank that you like. Um, subject to your personal circumstances, we will you know, put you in contact with a bank that can assist. Um, and of course, everything is done remotely. We will liaise with that bank, and we will set up that account with your help, of course, uh, and try and simplify that process. Um, you'll meet with the lawyers, okay? You'll have, a, you'll have a recommended law firm and they will then talk you through the investment paperwork. Uh, they will complete the power of attorney. Uh, they'll do the due diligence once all is well, once we've got all your documents, once we've got things like birth certificates, marriage certificates, criminal record certificate, and a few other bits and pieces. Once everything's ready to go, you will then be asked to transfer the investment money to your Portuguese bank account, uh, which you can do at any time. Uh, the investment is made, and then we can submit your application to AMA. Uh, and then from AMA, then, yeah, that's when the five-year clock starts to tick from that point. So, uh, so that's that's the goal. That's the goal. And, and from that point as well, that is when you're protected by the current laws. So as we've seen many times, the Portugal program keeps changing. Uh, and if I was to, if I was a betting man, I would say that the program will probably close uh, in the next couple of years. Um, but it's important to know that that is your, that's the kind of the, the safety net, if you like, the, uh, that's when everything becomes concrete and you know you are protected by the current laws on the date of that application we had to check this time and time again of course when the program was due to close last year because we had many clients in the pipeline that were um of course panicking about what's going to happen so uh, so yeah it was, it was clarified that as long as basically any applications are submitted before any changes in law you have nothing to worry about about 
you know, those future changes that come in. Um, so that's it. Once we've done that, we wait for the biometrics appointment. We would, like I say, guesstimate around nine to 12 months at this point. The Biometrics is the first and only time at which you need to come to Portugal as part of the application. Uh, you will be accompanied on the day. Uh, the lawyers will be there to help with the well, the translation from Portuguese to make sure you understand what's going on and you know where to put your fingerprints and where to go for your photo. And it is a pretty soul-destroying day, in all honesty, going to SEF for any reason. Uh, but hopefully the lawyer can keep you somewhat entertained and make it as easy as possible. Um, other than that, we wait for the card thereafter. Once the biometrics are done, the card is issued, and you then have your VIP pass to Portugal. That's it. From that point, you can live in Portugal. Okay, and from there, it is a case of then moving down the timeline to citizenship. And once we have the golden visa, that will last for two years. At the end of those two years, so around about year three, okay, two years, to, sorry, one year to get the visa, two years of the visa to be valid. So at the end of year three, we'll do the first renewal. There'll be a second renewal at the end of year five, whilst we wait for the passport to come through. And as long as you have, again, studied some Portuguese, rest assured, your passport will follow shortly thereafter. Okay. There you go. That's it. Mission accomplished. Mission complete. You have the fourth best passport in the world. Um, like I say, you have the rights to live, work, or travel into any EU country. And again, for, I mean, for myself, we take this for granted, but for some nationalities that, that may be on the call now, you know, also be aware that you then have visa-free travel to over 190 countries worldwide. I mean, certainly for, for us Brits, uh, that is something that we get by default. But for some nationalities, visa-free travel globally is also a big plus of getting the European passport. So there you go. That is the Golden Visa program. Uh, I think we're doing okay for time. Uh, I've got a few last slides to run through, and then we'll open up for some, some questions. Um, so just a quick um, crash course on the rules when selecting your investment. So if you do go down the investment route for things, sorry, just for the for the donation route and for the formalizing of a company and the creation of jobs, we can still assist with these topics, but it's more of a legal conversation rather than an investment one. Therefore, um, you know, please get in contact and we'll liaise uh, with one of the lawyers. Uh, but for those that are looking to invest uh, into the likes of a investment fund or a venture capital fund, these are the rules. Rule number one is the fund has to be approved and regulated in Portugal. Okay, there are tens of thousands of funds in the universe, but the, what, the ones that qualify for the program must be regulated in Portugal. They may not invest into real estate, okay, which was which was brought in as a new rule at the end of last year. The fund must invest at least 60% of its money into Portuguese assets as well. So, for example, you couldn't have a Portuguese fund that tracks the US stock market, for example, or a US fund that invests into Portugal. Got to have both. Got to be regulated in Portugal, and it's got to be invested in Portugal as well. Of course, the minimum investment is €500,000, and it's important that you keep the investment for the duration up until when you receive your passport. Any breaks in the investment can jeopardize the passport application. And so, of course, make sure you know you, you choose an investment that doesn't have a maturity date after three years, for example. But they, that's it. As long as, they, as long as they meet that criteria, the fund is good to go, uh, and then we can continue with your application and, uh, and get you on your way. Just be mindful uh, when you are picking a fund. Um, some, some of these, you know, I might be... Uh, might be quite obvious, but you know Portugal perhaps isn't maybe the first country that you would think of investing into uh, if you wasn't looking at the golden visa. It's not quite you know the banking system isn't quite as robust as the likes of the US and, and the UK. So there are there are some um, questionable investment options in Portugal, and it's always important to be clear on exactly what it is that you're investing into. Um, and these are just some of, some of my kind of uh, you know, tips, if you like, to make sure you're wary of. 
security for capital is number one. You know, before anything else, is the capital secure? You know, is, is there a track record? Um, what happens in a worst case scenario? Is there any kind of asset backed protection if anything happens to the fund? Um, all important questions to ask. Uh, be mindful of how long the investment ties the money up for as well. You know, realistically, you need at least six years. Uh, at which point you want to get the money out there and then be able to invest into whatever you like without the restrictions that you've had for the previous six years. So there's no point tying the money up for 10 years, 15 years, um, and being bound by what is a quite a small list of qualifying funds when, of course, there are tens of thousands out there in the universe. Uh, be mindful of fees. Um, there are some extortionate uh, uh, Portuguese funds that, you know, I don't mind. I personally don't mind paying fees, but they've got to be justified. Um, and some of the funds are expensive and, and not justified, but there can be setup fees, management fees, performance fees, and exit fees as well. There are some investments with no fees at all. Um, and there are some fees with all of the above. Sorry, some funds that have all of the, all of the above. Be mindful of the returns. Are they, is, there a, is there a guaranteed return? Is it a predicted return? Is it based on the success of a venture to the point where all of the capital might be lost? Or is it based on performance? You know, these are important questions to establish. And um, what is the risk overall? Um, you know, what is the, the risk of losing the capital? What's the institutional risk? And what is the uh, investment risk You know, and the value going up and down? Uh, and of course, see if there's any additional incentives on offer. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm aware of different funds that offer different incentives, such as, you know, reduced legal fees or free legal fees. What else? Um, you know, accommodation, free accommodation, you know, when you come over to do your minimum stay, you know, ni nice, nice parts of Portugal. So that's that's the, just a few few tips there. Other than that, you can invest in any sector that you wish. Uh, these are the, the main sectors um, within Portugal. Um, my, well, yeah, I, I won't kind of uh, cast any opinions, but the I, I have my personal top picks. But the um, you know you can invest anywhere that you like, and um, make sure you, you tick those four boxes. As far as kind of a snapshot on what type of funds are, are out there at the moment, as of today's date, there's around twenty five to thirty funds um, that you can use to qualify for the golden visa. Um, available with various different Portuguese fund managers. They all vary in shape and size, risk rating, return, security, um, and uh, and so forth. Uh, and of course, when, when we speak, if you do book in a meeting, we can review the fund directory and you can choose the fund that you feel uh, is, is best suited. But just to give you an idea of what's out there, there are, of course, low, medium, and high-risk funds that target different returns, anything from zero up to over 15% in, in some cases. Um, generally, you know, the higher the risk, the higher the return will, that will be targeted, but at the same time can be uh, quite the opposite as well. Management fees, setup fees, okay, they vary generally from zero to three percent per year. Setup fees, zero to three percent up front. Um, there is one investment fund that can be done with as with as little as three hundred twenty five thousand, which which I talked about before. Um, what else? And the full financing, like I say, with, of the of the one six eight. So just a, like I say, brief snapshot, ultimately it's your choice what, what to invest into. Uh, but again, uh, during a one-to-one -one meeting, you can access the fund directory and choose which one suits you best. Uh, as an example of, of one particular fund, which has been popular for, well, certainly of, of recent months, um, there is a, a particular fund that invests into the hospitality sector within Portugal, also into the food and retail and the healthcare sector collectively. It's one that pays an upfront return. Um, so it has a it's very, very simple uh, setup. 101,000 is paid upfront rather than an annual return. And you can actually use that 101,000 towards the 500,000 minimum. As we know, 500,000 must be the minimum investment to qualify. But you can do that with 399,000 of your own money 
Um, there's also a loan option, as I mentioned before, of 74,000. Just be mindful that there is an interest payable of either five or 10% per year uh, on that loan, depending on the loan option that you select. Um, but it can be done. As a guaranteed exit in the sixth year of 500,000. So in its simplest form, you have 399 that goes in and 500 comes back in six years time. Um, you, it is with one of the largest asset managers in Portugal. It also has a further layer of security. It's an asset-backed security as well, which is always good to have. Very few and far between. Um, and as I mentioned before, as an additional incentive, you have accommodation provided uh, in a very nice part of Portugal for your minimum stay each year as well to go in hand with the Golden Visa program. That's one example. Another example uh, as an equity fund. Um, again, there there are many different funds to choose from. Uh, there is um, one at the moment that was founded back in 2012. It's with the country's largest asset manager that looks after over a billion euros. Uh, and again, it's a managed fund that invests into different sectors. Target returns are higher. It doesn't have the fixed return. Okay, so it's, it would be it would be, it's a more adventurous investment than something that has a, a fixed return, of course. But the returns uh, can be higher as well. Uh, average performance over previous years has been in, in excess of over 15% per year. So it's just these are just two examples to show you kind of two opposite ends of the scale. Uh, ultimately, it's your choice as to how cautious or how adventurously that you invest. Uh, briefly on the financing option before we open up for some questions. Um, the financing is, is very simple, just about as simple as it gets. There is a fee of €168,000, which is effectively the investor paying an upfront interest to the lender. The lender in return will give €500,000 to be invested and you have no investment exposure whatsoever. Uh, there is no returns. It is a sunk cost. It is a comparable to a donation of 250. Naturally, giving away 168,000 compared to making a profit of 101,000 is a big difference. However, if it's not possible to raise 400,000 euros, 168,000 might be a great alternative to get the visa. Um, but there you go. Quick crash course. Obviously, any questions on these topics, uh, please do book in some time with me. I'll go into more detail. It's really designed just to give everyone a bit of an idea of what's involved in the program at this stage. Um, myself, I always encourage, I encourage everyone to speak to an expert. Um, there's obviously more and more information online by people that are not necessarily uh, the right people to to pass comments so always be sure to get professional advice around the portugal uh, golden visa program i myself now have processed over 150 applications just in the last two years alone i've seen the best and the worst of it and uh, and yeah please do reach out if you have any questions or if you've seen anything that you'd like clarity on um in in general and uh, and yeah please do like i say don't take my word for it punch my name into google do a bit of research, have a look at some of the YouTube videos. And uh, and of course, yeah, hopefully I've given you a good idea of, of what's involved. Well, thank you everyone for, for listening. I hope that was helpful. Hopefully that's uh, given you a full crash course, everything that you could ever need to know about the Portugal Golden Visa in just 50 minutes. Uh, but on that note, um, we've got some questions that were submitted before the... Uh, before the event, which I'll come on to shortly. I've seen a couple of questions come in as well. Uh, just before we do that, uh, if you would like to schedule a one-to-one -one discussion to go into more detail on anything that we've covered this evening, uh, please do so. Uh, it's a complimentary one-to-one -one discussion. Uh, you can scan the QR code. You can drop me an email. Uh, WhatsApp is also fine. Just be mindful of the time difference. Um, but uh, but WhatsApp is, is fine as well. Uh, but other than that, let's, uh, let's see... What questions we've got in but yeah we've got five five or ten minutes to to go through any questions so if there's anything i've missed uh you know a chance now to uh to fire them at me if uh, if not many questions i'll assume i've done a fantastic job on covering everything that you needed to know um okay so hi there michael can the investment made can the investment be made with cryptocurrencies 
The investment cannot be made with cryptocurrencies as of right now. However, you can invest into cryptocurrency. There is a cryptocurrency fund that you can invest into. Uh, however, the payment in order for the in order to qualify for the visa, the transfer of the investment money has to come from a bank account held in your name. So it has to be a cash transfer. So you can sell the crypto and then go back into crypto, um, but it must be a cash um, a cash investment. Hopefully that that's okay, Michael. But any further clarity, feel free to ask. Um, okay. Hi there, Mr. Anonymous. So the investment cannot be a real estate purchase any longer. Uh, that is correct. Yes. So at the end of last year, um, the government introduced, well, the program was going to close last year from, I remember I was, I was watching Seville, uh, a Seville football game around about March, 2023. And I got a notification on my phone to say the golden visa program was going to close, which caused mass panic. And um, and then for the next 10 months, nine months, um, it was heavily debated about the closure of the program between the public and the government. And it's um, very difficult to keep track of. But, in the, but it was due to close right up until November time. And right at the last minute, just as we were expecting D-Day, um, the government announced that the program isn't going to close. Uh, instead, they're just going to slightly change the criteria uh, and part of that change was the removal of, of property investment. Excuse me. Right. It was the removal of property investment, and that's any type of property investment. At the end of 2021, uh, they removed the option to invest into residential real estate, but you could still invest into commercial real estate. But yeah, at the end of last year, all types of property investment was removed from the criteria. And um, so, yeah, so it's just as, as we could before, just coming back a few slides, the routes to consider are these ones here. Creation of jobs, donations, investments into a venture capital or a investment fund, or the investment into an existing Portuguese company. And one of the rules of the funds is that the fund cannot invest directly or indirectly into real estate, point number two. Hope that's clear. Thank you for your question. Um, okay, right, let's see what questions we had coming in before the presentation. Then we'll, we'll finish up shortly. We're doing pretty well. But I think my watch is a bit fast, actually. Um, okay. And just while I start to load this up, I, for those that are just joining for the first time, I will be uh, presenting again on the 6th of November. I'll be actually comparing the different Golden Visa programs uh, within Europe, including Portugal, of course, but also the likes of Spain and Greece uh, and Malta. So if you want details on that next webinar, please do drop me an email and I'll, I'll send you the, uh, the registration details. Um, okay, so let's see what we've got. Hi there, Douglas. If we make an investment into a Portuguese savings bank of, say, 350000 will this allow me to rent a property in Portugal next year? Um, unfortunately not. I think we've covered that one there, Douglas. So 500000 is needed for an investment. So not far off our other three fifty. Um if you can get to 399, it can be done with the use of an upfront return um, or a donation of 250. So hopefully that, that helps. But no, savings into a Portuguese bank. It, as of last year, you could actually put a million euros into a Portuguese bank and you would have actually qualified. But, but that, again, was removed from the criteria. Um, hi there, Yassin. I'd like to study in Portugal. Is that possible? Yes, you can, Yassin. If you have the golden visa, you don't have to work. You can work. You can retire and sunbathe, study, dance, drive, do whatever you like. Up to 365 days a year. Hi there, Darren. Uh, will this be replayed? 
Uh, it will be will not be replayed. I will send a recording out on request. So if you for anyone that wants a recording of of what we covered this evening, please again drop me a quick email and I'll make sure that comes out to you in due course. It will be uploaded, of course, onto YouTube as well. Um, but yeah, just drop me an email. I'll send that over to you, uh, which can be done a little bit quicker than it goes onto YouTube. Um, okay, hi there, Michael. Yeah, so we've covered off the question regarding crypto. Hi, Keith. How does the tax situation differ from the D7 visa, especially in relation to UK trusts based in the Isle of Man? Um, well, let me cover off the tax. It's very simple, uh, the tax, because the tax does not differ in any way, Keith, whether you have a golden visa or a D7 visa. The visa, and this is a common a common um, misconception, actually, that the, the visa changes a tax. The visa has nothing to do with your tax. Your tax will only change when you physically move to Portugal for over six months of the year. Uh, of course, you need a visa to do that, but the, the actual granting of the visa does not change your tax situation. If you still live in the UK, you will still be tax resident in the UK. And whether you have the D7 or the D8 or the Golden Visa, those also will not change your tax residency unless you move to Portugal and then spend over six months of the year here. If you do that, then you'll become tax resident. And then the assets and the income that you have will change. For specifics around how trust will be taxed, that is a financial advisory conversation, which I'll need a little bit more detail on, Keith. So again, scan the scan the code that you can see or drop me an email. Uh, we'll book in some time and I'll go into a bit more detail as far as financial planning. Okay, right. All of that. Hi there, Colin. Uh, is there any funds that invest into wine production? or agriculture that qualify for the Golden Visa? Uh, yes, yes, there is. There is indeed. Uh, if you if you book in a call, Colin, yeah, I'll, you, know, you can view the fund directory, fund directory and I'll, I'll point those ones out to you. But yes, you can do that. If you fancy investing into wine, why not? Why not? Hi there, Christian. Did I hear you say that you can transfer from a current 401k or IRA from the US without a huge tax problem? Um, well, the number, a number of clients this year, Christian, have uh, utilized the 401k and the IRAs in the US. And with the addition of uh, a US LLC and um, some structuring from a, a US attorney, it has been possible. Yes, we have had clients that have utilized the uh, capital from the retirement accounts. It's not something, again, it's not something that I give advice on, but as part of the process, if you want to do the golden visa and you'd like to fund it from the US retirement accounts, uh, then I'll introduce you to the person that's been been assisting my clients from the US, uh, who is a, a, an attorney there. Um, and yes, yeah, and see, see if it can be done. Obviously, if, if you don't have to withdraw from the accounts, you know, you may not pay tax uh, as you would do if you made a withdrawal or, as I mentioned before, you know, the uh, the penalty if you withdraw before a certain age. Uh, so, yeah, Christian, yeah, book, book some time in. Drop me an email. We can, we can go through that. I can introduce you to, uh, to who you need to speak to and you can dig a little bit deeper. Hi there, Keith. Uh, does the golden visa allow the holder to use the shorter immigration queue or are the tax rules different to the D7 visa? Um, it's all one big queue, really, Keith, between the two. I mean, the, the main difference between the two, obviously, the D7 visa is, is, a, is a residency visa where you need to live in the country full time. Um, so I'm assuming that that is your, your intentions to do so. Um but the queue is the same. Obviously, the D the D seven gets you earlier access. You don't have to wait for the group for the for the visa to be issued to, to access Portugal. Um, but to get the visa, it's it's the same time. Ultimately, it's still a wait. Uh, the golden visa is not any faster. Uh, it's more really, Keith, just a case of choosing which visa is the most suitable. I mean, I have had some clients that have done both. You know, they do the D seven to get immediate access to Portugal, simultaneously running the Portuguese golden visa 
alongside that and the golden visa issues in 12 months and that then relinquishes the need to be tax resident in the country so you get the best of both worlds so that might be something to consider it just really depends on if you plan to be full-time resident in in portugal and you're happy to commit to that for the six years uh or sorry five years to apply for the passport as well hopefully that helps um, but for any other questions, uh, thank you for those that were submitted. If any other questions, um, again, please get in contact. Uh, feel free to say hello. You can check out, of course, my next webinar. I'll keep everyone up to date with any changes here. I'll be sending out a, a kind of a, a full uh, a full news update over the coming weeks as soon as I catch up on all my emails, having been out of the office for the past uh, past three weeks. And um, and yeah, also there's there's some yes, we're looking to extend our services to include um, Portuguese lessons as well. I completely forgot to mention, but in due course, um, likely beginning of November, we'll be extending our services to include uh, all the Portuguese lessons that you need to pass the test for your passport as well. So, loads to look forward to. Uh, thank you everyone for joining. I hope that was helpful, and um, I look forward. To speaking to you all soon, and uh, I think it's now time to get myself some tea and settle down for the evening. Uh, thank you, Bob. Have a good evening, and I shall speak to you soon. All the best.